Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. Today we got a special guest, Nikolai from Redwood City. He's a Bay Area local and we have some pretty fabulous work here that we're going to jump into. So without further ado, here's my guy Nikolai. So it's a stock engine, stock trans, stock transfer case. Don't have a doubler yet, but right here is, uh, I built a cross engine brace that goes in between the shock hoops because they're not shock towers. I needed something to prevent the hoops from bending inwards. They take all the weight from the coilover. This is the PSC reservoir. So it's an upgraded reservoir from the stock one, upgraded pump too. It, it needs to push out more fluid to steer the bigger tires. So it's all kind of custom. There's no, there's no bolt on parts that they give you. I just kind of had to figure it out myself. Yeah, nothing too special, but you know, it gets things done. Uh, here's the uh, air compressor. It's kind of hidden nicely uh, for the front air locker. It's the smallest one they had. I just needed it to lock the uh, lock the diff. This is the cooler for the power steering. It routes from the return line from the box or the gearbox to return box to the return line back to the reservoir. It's pushing uh, four and a half gallons of fluid at 1650 PSI. So um, the oil gets pretty hot. Diamond axle, you can see it's a diamond. <laughs> Here's the PSC Ram. It's a 1.5 inch bore, six inch stroke, and I actually had to reduce the stroke by one inch. So I kind of welded a little um, tab here to prevent the Ram from uh, blowing up the steering. Stock knuckles with the 25 millimeter pin by Marlin. I like that it's flush, you know, so if I'd ever do come down on a rock, I'm not gonna shear anything down there. Got steering stops and custom tie rod and drag link. Um, so that's uh, it's pretty basic, but I like, it's not a it's not a Dana style, the tie rod and the drag links uh, hey guys, up high. Hey there. Just shooting videos? Yeah. Okay, neighbors will want you out by dark. Yeah. Okay, so here's the here's the box tapped drilled for hydro assist. It's at a pretty steep angle, but uh, it works to keep the pitman arm kind of high and out of the way of any rocks getting under there. Not that they should, but it also keeps these U joints pretty straight. Not that that matters too much because their U joints pretty more or less easy install. There's no grinding back here. It flows pretty pretty smoothly from the steering wheel. So these are. Uh, <laughs> the blingiest part of the car, two and a half inch diameter, 14 inch stroke Fox with the remote resis, dual speed compression, adjustability. It's funny cause like the remote reservoirs are almost as big as like somebody else's shock and they, they work well, they're smooth. I'm, I'm not worried about them blowing up. Uh, I've bombed some dirt roads pretty, uh, pretty fast and, and they do a great job of soaking everything up. Let's see, I built the car originally around a 37 inch Uber STT Pro. I Decided to upgrade to some 39 inch KM3s. I wanted 40s, 39 and 40 inch tires, and I'm a big fan of BF Goodrich. I have their uh, all terrain tires that I use for like street driving and stuff. And then um, I'm planning to go to the Rubicon next month. I'm doing Slick Rock in a couple weeks. These are my kind of off road set Procom beadlocks. Got a pretty good deal on them. Got the rings powder coated to match the color. And for a giant mud terrain tire, they, so far, I'm happy with them. They're not too loud. Some trail gears, brackets, uh, it's a Tacoma. They're made for Tacoma bracket, but you know, same frame. So they fit the forearm pretty well. Trail gear makes this a uh, giant skid plate. It's, it's thick. I think it's three eighths inch plate, super strong. I went with that too, to protect the transfer case uh, as well. And, and, um, that drive line, the front drive shaft is made by South Bay Drive Line over in uh, San Jose. I really appreciate the, the good work that they do. And he helped me custom color it. It's uh, it's dirty right now, but it's supposed to be uh, polka dotted. The polka dots are after my great grandfather's cement truck company uh, in New York City in the 1970s and 80s. So it's kind of a, a tribute to, to him because you know, it spins around like a cement truck. Custom length link with uh, Weldon uh, bungs here. And then um, Himes with uh, jam nut to get that in there. And uh, the install was pretty simple. I mean, it fit around the uh, the frame well. It was just a matter of placement and the length of length I wanted. And I actually went with an upper 
longer link, I was doing some research and found out that the pinion angle does not change. And then correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I think last time I read this, the pinion angle does not change through suspension travel when the upper link is 25% longer than the shorter links, opposed to other link kits that have an upper link kit that is only 75% the length of the lowers. And when that happens, the pinion angle changes during travel uh, and that can cause some unnecessary binding in the drive shaft. So I wanted to make sure that the angle stays the same. I don't know if that makes total sense, but um, I guess when I was reading about it, it made sense. And so that's why I chose to go with a longer upper, shorter, shorter lowers. And then what's going on here in the rear? So funny you ask that because uh, all the money's in the front and the rear cost me just a couple hundred dollars to build their Chevy leaf springs, the 63s. I had all pro leaf springs for a little while and they sagged. Let's see, shameless gambler plug. Uh, that was a good time. We got Coastal Off Roads DIY bumper kit. Took a couple hours to build, but I'm so stoked with the way it turned out. Super high profile. It's everything I kind of want in a bumper. I got this, the, well, the, the swing out's custom, but the handle and stuff, this is um, four by innovations but I made, I made the rest of this with spare steel lying around. Rear suspension, it's uh, Chevy Lee Springs, the 63s. They do well, you know, I'm not stoked about them, but I'm not, uh, I don't hate them. I wish I got the uh, shackle angle a little bit better because uh, when I flex it out, they don't have a lot, of, uh, a lot of droop. It can maintain a load pretty decently. And there's those uh, Fox remote resis, the adjustability and Rear axle, it's a, it's a Tacoma axle, uh, the E-Locker, 48 gears. So uh, I went with Lee Springs because um, I originally moved the axle back a couple inches because I made some custom wheel wells on a different car and I moved the axle back forward. So that's why I'm using Lee Springs just to move the axle kind of front to back too. I have uh, underneath the Lee Springs, it's hard to see, but it's uh, Skies off-road um, axle relocation brackets. So I'm, I'm happy with them and I, I like what Sky does. So pretty cool with that. Everything else is pretty much stock. Um, gas tank, exhaust is stock. You know, it's it's not loud. It's pretty quiet. I like it. And then, yeah, this is my this is my uh, street spare. Just the BF Goodrich All Terrain. I use those when I'm driving the rest of the year, but I'm going on a couple wheeling trips. So I put on the 39s. If I were to buy one tire for the rest of my life, I'm buying 37 inch KO2s just because I think uh, they, best tire for a do it all do it everything kind of kind of deal i like bf goodrich hard to beat uh that was it <laughs> um i think the sliders are all pro that was like the first kind of armor i did and then i built that that bumper too but she gets it done you know um front and rear lockers the links are awesome I'm, I'm gonna adjust the suspension a little bit more, you know, uh, I'm gonna have to lift it up or I can raise the front an inch more and I'm gonna do some work to the, uh, the rear, to make it uh, more level. Um, I'm happy with it. So uh, I, I couldn't have asked for a better car and uh, it's taken me so many places that I couldn't have gone with uh, other, other vehicles and um, the cargo space is second to none. Um, yeah, it's stellar. And that's that's uh, my foreigner. It's the five speed transmission. Um, that's one of my favorite parts about it. Keeps it classic and uh, it's easy to work on. You know, uh, I've never had, never had an issue. I also want to give some shout outs to uh, Cam and Dusty at uh, Poly Performance. They were a big help and uh, they stayed patient with me as I was going through this building process. Um, they helped me out with a lot of, a lot of good gear. Yeah, Jeff, Toy Connection. The guys at South Bay Driveline, Marlin, of course, and uh, the guys at Trail Gear too. They had a lot of good knowledge to, to share with me and uh, tons of other miscellaneous companies here and there. Yeah, it's, it's always a community project. You know, it's never that just the one person. Um, you always gotta ask people for advice and stuff. Thank you, uh, this is my forum. So we wanna thank Nikolai for coming down here today and showing off his solid axle swap forerunner, third gen 2000 manual this thing is a beast 39 inch tires i mean pretty much unstoppable hopefully he won't get stuck and if he does he's gonna upgrade to 40s yeah or get a winch who knows <laughs> with all that said thanks for watching thanks for subscribing 
If you have any questions or comments, do that below. We'll see you soon and sick solid axle swap third gens. Thanks, man. Quick history, I got this Forerunner when I was 18, um, back in 2013. My first car was an XJ, it was a two-wheel drive, uh, two-door, uh, it was kind of, kind of a piece of junk. I sold that, I wanted to get into four-wheeling. I've always liked going, you know, being outdoors, skiing, snowboarding, mountain bike riding, did all that stuff growing up. And uh, I wanted a rig that was reliable and capable to do all that good stuff. So, sold the XJ, got a Forerunner. It was a mild build. It's a 2000, so last year of the, the five speed, it's got the, the R150F trans. I spent about a year looking for that because I knew I wanted a manual. Where'd you end up finding it? Down in Gilroy, Ford dealership or something, but um, it took a while and, and at the time, you know, now that you see manuals, they're like, you know, 14, 15 grand. Yeah. This had 136,000 on the clock and um, they were asking eight. Got a sweet deal on it, jumped on it while we could. Started off with uh, Old Main Emu three inch lift. That got things done for a couple of years, and it was reliable. It got me to and from Wisconsin uh, for three there and back trips, no problems whatsoever. I wanted to get into like custom fab, and so I bought a welder, and me and my buddy, we built this bumper in his driveway, bought some quarter inch plate steel, made some cardboard cutouts, and kind of mocked it up. I think it turned out pretty well for being a couple 18 year olds with a, a, well, a stick welder for the first time. Got a Yeti bottle opener just in case. And then, you know, seeing all these Jeep guys go and do the Rubicon and all those other local four wheel drive trails, you know, I've been to Hollister a few times and then I saw these uh, Toyota truck buggies doing all this stuff. I was like, that that looks like so much fun. You know, the no doors and and just big tires. It's, it's it was my calling, it's what I wanted. Um, so I started doing some research Jeff over at Toy Connection in Santa Clara, he kind of led me the right way and he said, you know, get this, this, and this, and before you know it, I had a diamond axle. So I guess to get into the build list, it's diamond diamond housing with RCV uh, chromoly 30 spline shafts with their Molly hubs, the hub gears. It's a full float with mini truck IFS width hubs, so it's a little wider. Toyota mini truck knuckles, the steering, the Marlin heavy duty steering arms, the 25 millimeter upgraded pin. I've seen a lot of guys shear those and break those arms, so uh, I decided, you know, they had an option of the heavy duty stuff. Why not? Why not go for it? When I built this, I wanted to make it so I wouldn't have to do it again. You know, I wanted all the biggest and best parts, but I still wanted to retain Toyota running gear. That's why it's diamond and not a, not a one ton. I figure it's it's good enough and it's, it's strong enough to hold up to the 30. I built it on 37s. It's sitting on the 39 inch KM3s right now. Um, but I'm, I'm not worried about the front axle braking or anything. Third member, it's High Pinion Land Cruiser third, 488 gears and um, an ARB air locker. Uh, oh yeah, I finished the PSC hydraulic assist kit. It was kind of a DIY kit, you know, they just sent you a ram and some um, a reservoir pump. So I did that all in the last couple weeks. I think out of everything I've done, that's my favorite modification. It steers like butter. There's no steering wobble. It drives straight. It's it's pretty amazing how much uh, hydraulic assist can do for the car. The steering linkage, it's it's all custom. The rod ends are um, it's it's OE Toyota stuff. I forget what company they use, but Japanese rod ends. I trust them. They're for an 80 series. Custom length tie rod and drag link. Built that stuff in my garage, and then the IFS style steering box. I tapped it and drilled it a couple weeks back with with the steering assist kit, and that's what this is a oil cooler that power steering oil gets pretty warm so i was gonna put this behind inside the engine bay and then it didn't fit too well and i was like it actually kind of fit perfectly right up on the uh this hood and i haven't cut the grill yet but the grill is gonna just sit over it and it doesn't have to look too pretty let's see the the kit it's a custom three link kit time joints i'm using the, the trail gear tacoma brackets axle brackets and the frame brackets they they fit well even though it has higher mileage and some maintenance might need up to date. Like I, I wouldn't hesitate driving this across country. This started off as a black forerunner. This is the original frame. I did all the work on this frame on the black one. So the same, it was a 2000 forerunner SR5, five speed, just black. I just got some real major body damage off-roading and stuff. Crunched it a few times, put it on its side. Um, 
and at one time, like, like I, I thrashed it pretty good. Uh, the A pillar, crushed the A pillar in. My trans is kind of going bad. Uh, the counter shaft bearings were whining pretty good, and the valve cover gasket had been leaking for 20,000 miles. I have to put it on its side. Some um, oil got into the, uh, I hydro locked it, and I think that um, blew the head gasket because I was cranking it and it wasn't turning. I was like, oh, I, I should have thought about this. Should have pulled the plug before I did that. So I pulled the plugs, blah, 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 did all, put it all back together. And it was just burning oil, uh, just white smoke for, for a long time. And I was like, okay, you know, engine's junk, body's junk, transit's junk. I'm gonna buy a whole new foreigner and just put it on my frame that's already built. So bought this green body about a year ago bought it in LA, drove it back home from LA. The guy who I bought it from told me that the rear diff was leaking, it was a little wet, and I was like, ah, like, you know, whatever. I'll, I'll top it off when I get home. I'm not too worried about a, a little leakage from a rear diff. There was no diff fluid. It, it had leaked all the way, and so I was driving back up and over the grapevine at like 9 p.m. I, I, I called him like two days prior. I was like, hey man, I want your foreigner. I'm gonna buy it, I'm gonna fly down from San Francisco. And he, he held it for me, it was awesome. Great guy, got down there. Bought it that day, driving it home, 9 a.m. over the grapevine. I'm hearing this loud, like, whir, and it's getting louder and louder, and I, you know, kind of trying to troubleshoot it while I'm driving. I didn't want to stop and pull over. And then it went quiet for a second, and then, boom, like, just a loud, loud bang. And I was like, F And then the rear end started, like, locking up. The, the tires would roll and stop and roll and stop, and, and I was like, I, I gotta get the f off the highway right now. I'm going, like, 60 up and down these hills, and pull over next to this like power sports they did dirt bikes and side by sides and stuff like that I, they, but they, there's a there's highway five then i'm on the side then some dirt a fence and then this this company get out i'm looking around the diff is just like it's smoking hot whatever oil was left in there had been cooking off and it was hot and i was like you know i, I probably blew a diff because there's no oil so i took off my rear drive shaft and was like oh, i'm just gonna drive it home front wheel drive Maybe maybe the wheels will still spin. I didn't bring any tools with me too. So the, the company, the power sports company that was right next to I was like, hey man, like I think I just blew a diff. You guys got a couple of like wrenches I can borrow. I need I need to do these quick repairs. I'm driving home tonight and, and it's late. They're all packing up, they're trying to go home. Took off my drive line, threw it in the back, put in front wheel drive, and I'm I'm about, I'm about to get going. And the rear is just locked up. The pinion bearing blew up and Pinion was cocked in a way that wouldn't allow that to move with the ring gear. So the axle shaft is just locked in place. And I'm trying to go see if I can get on the road. And I'm actually digging myself down in sand in front wheel drive. I was like, oh my God, like I'm, I'm, I'm post. Um, so I was looking around like, like what, what, what can I do right now? I can't get out. Um, I was like, I gotta call the tow truck. Like, where are they gonna tow me? There's no shops that are open. Do I sleep here in the night? I was like, okay, O'Reilly's closes in one hour. Uh, I called a tow truck, they towed me over to O'Reilly's, I bought a bunch of tools, bought some jack stands, took apart the rear diff, I took the rear diff out of the housing. It was 9.59 p.m. and I'm, 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 I took the diff out, uh, got all that shit out, put the uh, shafts back in. Uh, I'm trying to take the diff out too, and I'm like, it's not coming out. I was like, oh, the axle shafts are in there. I had to remove the axle shafts, kind of, but I didn't want to break the brake lines, so I kind of just bent them out of the way a little bit. Finally got the third member out, put the uh, shafts back in, bolted everything up, returned all the tools that I just used. And I was like, I'm sorry guys, I just needed them to get home. And, and they were nice about it. They were yeah, really kind because they could have just said, uh, you're, you're paying for like 300 bucks of tools that I don't need. So they were awesome. Yeah, it's 10 o'clock, I'm hungry as fuck. Doing this for a couple hours, just wrenching. And then uh, yeah, gas station, two like 16 ounce Red Bulls, some snacks, and it takes me six hours to get home in front wheel drive. I was home at like 4 a.m. That was. That was a fun night. So then later, now now that this truck, it, it was a stock 4Runner. I bought it because it was a five-speed, 3.4, four-wheel drive. So it was basically the same car as the black one that I got, that kind of destroyed. We did a body swap. We took apart, took this body off of the original frame and then swapped this body onto the, the black frame, the frame that you see now. Swap the engine, the trans, and the T case all in one. Put the wires back in. It, it's a pretty simple process, you know. It's just plug and play. It's all the same, all the same things. And 
one I have a, uh, a buddy Matt he owns a shop Woodside Auto on Woodside Road awesome awesome mechanic he's a master mechanic he helped me kind of tweak things dial things in again make sure everything's perfect there's no dash lights on there's no you know everything's running as it should it's, it's basically the same car it's just body swap did that and I I guess to your answer your question the only real breakdown I've had is that rear diff because I didn't check it's not because Toyota made some shitty components yeah, they make the best cars that's why they are like the most popular automaker in, in the world it's, you know you buy it and you wouldn't it's gonna last forever so that's yeah, another reason why I bought the forerunner after the XJ the style too it's just it's simple it's there's no there's no fancy stuff going on there's no um, you know like the Xterra that it's, it's not